Well, let's finish in Genesis, okay? And we will finish, Lord willing. Either I'll finish or you'll leave, so one or the other, okay? Uh, Chapter 13 of Genesis, and we'll conclude there. Because I want you to look one last time at Lot's choices to feed his lusts. Lot, who never restrained his physical eyes from controlling his life. Lot, who we saw already from 2 Peter, was a believer, but he lived with the consequences of his lust instead of the blessings of his faith. In four short verses, we saw this morning his tragic path. Verse 10, Lot lifted up his eyes. He, lived, he is the prime example of this lust of the eyes stuff. Verse 11, one who lives by the lust of the eyes will choose for himself. That's what verse 11 says. And he chose all, everything he wanted. That's that's what he chose for himself. And then finally, in verse 13, he got comfortable in Sodom, where they were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. Lot lived for Lot, picked the best. He looked at Sodom in verses 10 and 11. Verse 12, he turned his tents. Look what 13, 12 says. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain. And look at this indictment. At the end of verse 12, and pitched his tent even unto Sodom, toward and right up facing and right on the border of. That's where he was. And then as we saw this morning, look at chapter 14 and verse 12 on the next page in my Bible. They also took Lot, Abraham's brother, who dwelt in Sodom. He wasn't content with looking at it. He wasn't content with being pitched next to it. He moved right in. And we saw this morning. Starting in verse 14, what did Lot lose because of these terrible choices? First of all, in verse 14, Lot separated from Abraham. That happens so often. People who are pursuing material things pretty soon have to drop out of fellowships and accountability groups and Bible studies and and small group and ministries because they work. They got to work. Of course, they don't tell what they're working for. You know, it's interesting, if our priorities are of God, then our life is not of control. Because anything that's out of control, our time, our priorities, our our finances, they're not under God's control. That's what his word tells us. And so Lot, all of a sudden, had no time for Abraham. He lost the fellowship with God's friend. He lost the accountability of Abraham, who said, uh, Lot, how does that fit in with God? You know, Lot didn't want to hear that. He lost his friendship. He separated from Abraham. He moved into Sodom. The uncle who loved him, the man who shared God with him, was now not as interesting as the glittering lights on the horizon that marked the city of sin and fun. Chapter 19, look at verse 9. I alluded to it this morning, but I want you to see the wording. And they said to Lot, verse 9, stand back. In other words, back off, man. And they said, this one comes in to stay here. You catch it? He came into the city. They knew him as the successful businessman that lived out there in the tent on the horizon that they'd all grown up seeing. Well, he, verse 9, he came in here to stay. So he kept dealing with them. He kept bringing his flocks in. He kept coming to the market and maybe selling his wool goods. I don't know, his cheese. I don't know what he was selling. But Lot finally... Stop coming to market and just moved into town. And he keeps acting as a judge. We'll deal worse with you than with them. So they pressed hard against the man Lot and came near to break down the door. So Lot, secondly, not only lost the fellowship, accountability, and friendship with Abraham, he lost his testimony. The citizens of Sodom mocked him and said that he who lived among them couldn't comment on their lifestyle choices. Now we know from Peter that every day Lot was vexed in his righteous soul by what he saw and heard them doing. But he he lost his testimony to them because he became a part of them. Verse 14 of chapter 19, it says this, So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who had married his daughters. And he said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But to his sons-in-law, he seemed to be joking. He lost half of his family. They wouldn't leave Sodom, and they were destroyed with Sodom. His own family mocked him when he warned them of God's pending destruction and the wickedness of Sodom. You see, even though Lot's righteous soul was vexed, they never got a righteous soul, and they were never vexed. 
That's the problem with our choices. Lot was grieving the Spirit of God who had saved him, but Lot was just totally impregnating his family with evil, literally. They, they lived and dwelt in that wicked place because of his business choice. He should have cared for his family. But there are more ways to care for your family than moving into Sodom. And he didn't make the right choice. And he lost half of his family right there. Verse 15, he also lost his ability to respond to God. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry. I mean, what a special thing. They had angels stay overnight with them. Wow. And these angels were giving him revelation. They said, Arise, Lot, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, your two unmarried daughters. The other married ones give up on. They're not leaving. Lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered. See, a double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. And he is. He's looking at his bank and said, man, I've got to get over there and get some money. got to withdraw something. He was looking at where he was supposed to get. And then he was looking back at all of his warehouses filled with whatever he had. Then he was looking where God, and he was just torn between the two. See, he lived not for where he was going, but for where he was. And he was lingering. He had lost his ability to respond to God. And God urged him to flee, and he lingered so long that the angels had to drag him. Look what it says. It says, and while he lingered, the men, those angels, took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters. I don't think that, the, I think Lot was the best of them all. I mean, I, I, don't, I think the daughters and wife were, were not just lingering. They were running back that way. And those angels grabbed them, and they, they started dragging them. And it says they brought them physically, forcibly, they dragged them out and set them outside the city. They, they couldn't, they had to drag him out of there. Lot lost his ability to respond. In verse 26, Lot lost his wife. Because even though she got dragged out of Sodom, her heart was still there. She rejected all the revelation she had. And, and Lot's wife is such a sobering, serious reminder that you can... You can be surrounded by someone that's righteous. You can hear righteous talk. You can see the things of God. You can hear the things of God. And you can, you can even be affected by them to some extent. And you can still be destroyed. Lot's wife is an unbeliever. Lot's wife will forever be in the lake of fire. She is a judgment upon unbelievers. God destroyed her and gave her what she really wanted. Lot's wife is an unbeliever who grew up, had the privilege of being next to a righteous man, had the privilege of hearing from righteous Abraham uncle, meeting angels, hearing revelation from God, she just was right next to it, and it never penetrated her heart. That's why Jesus said in Luke, remember Lot's wife. Talk about something very sobering, Jesus said. Jesus didn't say, remember Abraham, he's a great guy. Didn't say, remember Daniel, he's such a righteous man. Jesus commanded his disciples, when he was talking about how, how intoxicating the world would be, he said, don't forget Lot's wife. That's a commandment. It's a present one, too. He says, never, ever stop remembering and meditating on Lot's wife. When's the last time you meditated on her? Before this morning. <laughs> Long time. We're supposed to never stop thinking about Lot's wife. Why? Because she's such a sobering lesson. She was destroyed because... Her soul longed for the world. Her desires were so strong she couldn't obey the only command they gave her not to look back. Then Lot lost the rest of his family. Look at verse 30. Uh, he, Lot went up to Zoar. He dwelt in the mountains, and his two daughters were with him, for he was afraid to dwell in Zoar, and his two daughters dwelt in the cave. And the firstborn said, Our father is old. There's no man on earth to come in. as the custom of all the earth. Everybody around us was involved in promiscuity in Sodom, and there's nothing. And everybody is doing, you know, and, and it could have been an even more noble thing. We're never going to get married. I don't know. 
But what they did shows it might have been the former. But verse 32, come, let us make our father drink wine and we'll lie with him. I mean, they had quite a plan. I wonder if they'd seen that played out before them. Amazing. We do what we see and what we are allowed to live around. And we'll lie with him that we may preserve the lineage of our fathers. So they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father. And he didn't even know it. He was so drunk. When she lay down or when she arose and it happened the next day that the firstborn said, The younger, indeed, I laid with my father last night. Let's make him drink wine. And you go in and lie with him. I mean, she's getting her to follow her sin that we may preserve the line of our father. And they made their father drink wine another night. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he didn't know when she lay down or when she rose up. Both of the daughters, verse 36, of Lot were with child by their father. You know what I say? Compromise of Lot defiled his kids. I don't think his daughters would have learned that living out in the desert in a tent. I don't know, but it sounds awful lot like Sodom to me. And the firstborn, verse 37, bore a son and called his name Moab. He's the father of the whole Moabite nation to this day. And the younger also bore a son and called his name Ben-Ami. And he is the father of the people of Ammon to this day. Abraham had children, had a son specifically, who became the people of God. Lot had two sons who are characterized in biblical history as becoming God's enemies. The Moabites and the Ammonites had to be exterminated because of their sin, because of their wickedness, because of their worshiping of, of horrible deities. Lot lost the rest of his family as his remaining daughters began to act like the people they had lived around so long in Sodom. They knew the tricks. They watched the sinful ways of Sodom so long. They just did what they had learned, and they tricked their dad. And finally, in verse 38, Lot lost his legacy because his descendants were defiled and became the enemies of God. Lot was tempted and never seems to have resisted. God allowed him to choose to go up the hill toward Abraham, and he said no. I'm going to go down the hill towards Sodom. Lot was drawn toward the wrong things, the things that were against God, not the things that were for God. Lot looked at Sodom with the lust of the eyes. He faced his tent towards Sodom, and he moved in to Sodom. It would be difficult to decide whether or not Lot was truly a saved man just by reading what we read tonight. He made no positive contributions to the life of faith. He chose always the lower, the carnal, and the worldly path. He left the fellowship of the faith at the earliest possible moment and never seems to have been restored to that fellowship. He made no mark for God. His family ended in disaster. The last we see of him in the narrative is he's drunk and dishonored. Indeed, were it not for those two verses, the remarkable statement of Peter written several thousand years later, we would be justified in concluding that the root of the matter was he was never saved. Such is the life of a backslider. And may God deliver us from the lust of the eyes. Abraham faced the same temptations, but Abraham stayed a pilgrim for God in his tent. He never moved into town. Abraham built altars everywhere he went. What's an altar? An altar was a place where Abraham remembered the promises and the presence of God in his life. Everywhere he moved, he built an altar to remember God's promises and his presence. Abraham became a hero among all mankind. Lot ends ignominiously in incest. Abraham is called God's friend three times. Lot fades out and his family becomes God's enemies. Why is this? The lust of the eyes made Lot conform to the world. All that he lived for went up in smoke, and he was buried under the ruins somewhere in the area around the Dead Sea. Lot is a warning to all believers not to love the world, not to live by the lust of the eyes, not to become friendly with the world or be stained by the world, because the, the day of reckoning will finally come. It's the care of stuff, Jesus said, that makes our hearts grow cold. It's when we're rich and increased with goods that we abandon the need to hold Christ's hand and we set off on our own. So this evening, Lot tells us, beware of the lust of the eyes. 